Hello, my name is Jason, and welcome to my Art 315 Art Critique video. Um, so essentially, our objective was to go into the Los Angeles County Museum of Arts, also known as LACMA, and our objective was to find two either portraits or artwork sculptures and essentially evaluate them for colors, uh, theme, um, give context to them and more. And so, without further say, let's get started. And so, art has many forms in which it is made and produced. And so, art is known to be subjective when, when it is being evaluated because it, it's based on personal opinion and facts instead of concrete evidence or facts. And so, artwork can be interpreted in many different ways and can be described using personal statements. And so... One wouldn't necessarily find an artwork and find a concrete fact to it and necessarily say that this is what this artwork means and only this because artwork, any artwork is subjective and it's not, it, it doesn't have a sole meaning, but it's more for the person to interpret and actually see. And so art is known to be a visual medium used to express emotions and experiences. And so art can vary from being classical artworks that portray something nice or or have an underlying context to it. So it could be something really pretty, which could show uh, something really nice, really colorful. But it could also be something really dark. The, the whole point of art isn't necessarily to focus on these things, but more of what's trying to be told because it is said that an artwork could speak a thousand words. And so whenever looking into artworks, this is something one should keep in mind. And so my first artwork that I had evaluated was this artwork by Ludwig Meidner, also, and it's called the Puck Eucalyptic landscape. It was made in 1913 and this was essentially painted a year before the first shot would be fired in World War I. And so this was essentially what was portrayed to be the beginning. And in the apocalypse, it portrays to be a city at war, which is clearly the context, but the thing is, it's more disoriented. And you could see many lines crossing each other. And so in the in the portrait, you could see that the soldiers are standing around, but at different directions, which looks like there's chaos happening in the city. When one looks at the floor, you could see deep cracks, which could signify that things are falling apart. The buildings, on the other hand, are not... Uh, a rect square a rectangle shape but more of a jagged zigzag line which could signify that the buildings are collapsing that the the state within itself is falling and collapsing and so whenever you also look at the soldiers when you look at the soldiers you could also see that the they're expressionless they have they have no for real look on their face because you can determine their facial expression. This could be due to the fact that during this time it was very political and around this time many people were scared to speak up on their personal opinions or rebel against law and order because it was very frowned upon and looked down upon. And so in reality the soldiers were forced to obey law and order no matter what the state of the world looked like and what was happening. Their main objective was to get things done and come back home with a victory. And so this is a phenomenal job by Ludwig Meidner. And so here's me with the painting, as you could see. Whenever you look at the portrait, you could see the jagged lines. You could see the soldiers that are dressed in black. You could see the jagged lines in the sky see the town that looks like it's collapsing within each other and when you also look at the sky you could also quickly see the colors that's one of the first things that caught my eye and in this 
in this painting you can see that the sky is portrayed to be very dark and gloomy there's little to no white into it um, this could signify that the sky is more covered up and cloudy and this will give off more of a gloomy mood whenever it rains or whenever the weather is down what people tend to see is cloudy skies and that usually brings people's emotions down because of the dark nature of it and so Ludwig did an amazing job of not only adding the lines and portraying the city but also adding the detail to the sky to add to the feeling of chaos and so when you look at the colors the colors here are not really bright you don't see a dark a very bright blue you don't see a pink you see more black gray white more of like dark or um, original colors that one might originally see but in reality it's more of a darker shade and this could give off more of a depressed gloomy type feel to it and he did an amazing job of portraying this and giving a feel of chaos just like one might feel right before world war commences and so my other painting is by David Hockney and this one is called Mahala and Drive the Road to the Studio which was created in 1980 and as you could see here is the portrait here's the painting it's a very very long one and it was very amazing to see and sit in front of it here's me standing in front of it so let's jump right into it so David Hockney was born in July 9th 1937 but he was originally born in England it wasn't until where he grew up he would come to the United States and visit and one of the first places that he came to visit was California and when he came to California he quickly fell in love with the environment and the, the the state he quickly fell in love with the colorful state and like the really really sunny nature of it just like anyone would visiting california for the first time and so in this picture he had painted the famous hills known to valley residents in california also known as mahalan drive this is more up in the hills where um, more like Calabasas type area and whenever you go to this location you could kind of the very top you could get a good look of the valley and it's a very beautiful sight to see and so the picture was portrayed in the day because of the because of the bright colors used as you could see here the colors used are some very bright colors you don't necessarily see a dark color or shades because it's not really needed this is more supposed to be of a beautiful painting and something that represents something that means a lot to him and presents very close within him and so whenever someone visits for the first time and they fall in love with a place like david did it's it's easy for one to notice things that the average person might not which is color the beauty of things and even small little details as in trees the roads and things like that so he was able to necessarily portray his memory to the best type but he was able to paint Mahalan Drive in the most beautiful and creative way what really resided with me within this painting was how he used bright colors and it made the painting very beautiful the reason for this is because whenever one travels to their state or a state they necessarily love and admire they tend to see things that the average person wouldn't and in this case he noted colors that maybe people may not see on the daily basis and so in this instance David was able 
to use a lot of colors to bring to life. And an example is whenever I go back home to Colorado and I take photos of nature or the sky and stuff like that, there tends to be people that respond to my photos saying that it's normal or it's average. There's nothing really special about it. But the whole point of my photos isn't necessarily to please people, but to capture what I see as beautiful. To my eye, this is my home. To me, I'm capturing something that resides within me. And one may not be able to see the beauty that that I see, but as long as I'm able to see that and admire that as much as I can, that's all that necessarily matters. And here, David could be seen portraying what he really fell in love with and was able to really convert in a way that re really resembled it in a positive manner. And so another really, really cool thing I would like to add is how he used a fairly good amount of warm colors. And a thing that I would like to attribute this to is because this is the state of California. This is the sunny state of California and it's known to be sunny, hot, and very colorful with palm trees and nature. So he was really he was really able to portray the nature and really capture the sunny side of California. Another really cool thing is how instead of painting the city and painting something that may not be really recognizable to the average person, he instead put a grid what seems to be like a what looks to be like a, a maps grid and this could signify the valley because the valley is very intersectional and it has a lot of crossing streets so one could easily think of this to be the valley that David painted so yes this was my art critique video for 315 this was a really fun experience to go to LACMA museum and be able to see these paintings and many more firsthand. Um, it really taught me that art is subjective and it doesn't have a single meaning. It really showed me that there's beauty to be seen and that art could differ within every person. The main thing that matters is what the painting tells you. What matters is what, what story you're able to tell from that painting. And in these two paintings by David and Ludwig, I could easily say that these two paintings are a great representation of art as a, as how art is a great medium. Thank you for watching my video. and.